Hello everyone, it's the first Sunday in June and of course time for a new prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. For anybody that wants to follow along with the prompt this month, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Now, Kylie and I have decided that we're going to do something a little bit different this month and we're going to set you weekly challenges and it will be based around something small. So this week's small challenge is to do something with tea bags um, and you can interpret this in any any way you like if you want to do something with a tea bag and make a larger piece that's absolutely fine as long as you use a tea bag that's absolutely great now i've got a selection of different types of tea bags here i've got some tetley ones here these are the round ones i've got some yorkshire tea here square tea bags and i've also got some of these i think these are, are these pucker or twinnings these are these are pucker i think that's earl grey tea and i've opened most of these out but left this one whole and then these are just um, Twinnings fruit teas. Now, the easiest way to get into the tea bags, if you want to keep it this type of shape here, I think the easiest way is to just snip the bottom off and pour the tea leaves out once the tea bag is dry. Once I've used or made my cup of tea, what I tend to do is just put mine on a piece of kitchen towel and then st uh, stick it on top of my boiler to dry out overnight. And then these ones here, I find that the easiest way is to just snip the cotton at the top and just open it out there's a seam um, at the back and again you just open that out and um, so we've got different shapes here to work with I'm going to try a few different techniques with tea bags today I'm going to start off with some decoupage using napkins I've got this napkin here which couldn't be more appropriate this was sent to me in happy mail and I'm so sorry because I can't remember who it was that um, sent it to me but I'm going to use where's it gone this tea bag here and I'm going to cut out this part of the napkin and I'm just going to cut that with my scissors just so that I don't um, cut into the other pieces around it. I want to try and save as much of this as I can. I was going through my napkins the other day and pulled this one out and just couldn't um, believe it. So I think I received so many bits and pieces that sometimes they get lost. So we'll just cut this out like, like that. There we go. Now, of course, the napkins are three ply, um, sometimes two, but usually three. So I'm just going to take the layers apart because otherwise it's just going to come unstuck. Here we go. Here comes the last one and just carefully prise the top bit um, off. I can discard those bits there and I want to glue this down to the napkin there like that. I've got myself a piece of deli paper and what I'm going to do, in fact, what is the easiest way to do this? I think I'll use a glue stick since this is so small. I've just brought the camera down a bit. I'm going to apply the glue stick to the tea bag itself all over like this. Um, again, as usual, making sure that I've got plenty applied to the edges. That should that should do it and then I think the easiest thing to do is to take the tea bag then and apply it to the back of the napkin so let me just make sure oh whoops Daisy so make sure that you've got your napkin turned over um, so that you do get the image on the front and then I'm just going to apply that to the top there like that and stick it down so we can turn it over now and then I'm just going to use um, a bone folder here we go just really, really gently just to glue that down. And so that's the first one. Um, so we just need to wait for that to dry just a little bit and then, of course, um, cut around the edges. Well, before I apply the matte medium, I also want to apply some napkin to the little tab at the top as well. So I'm going to cut myself a piece of this one here that I can maybe stick down. Um, cut. It's easier to cut when you keep the plies together and then peel it apart afterwards. Of course, you could tear as well, but it's just easier in this case just to cut it. So we've got one there. What else can we, what else can we use? Let's use another part um, as well. That one there isn't quite big enough. I think we'll just use this part this part here as well I think it's the same but that's okay so we've got the same on each each side 
Then I just need to peel the layers apart. So we'll do this with both of these and then I can stick it down in exactly the same way. So just make sure that you've got both of your layers of your napkin off. So that's that done. There we go. Let's keep those. And then I'm just going to apply some, some glue. And let's just move that out of the way. So again, we'll do it with the glue stick and then I can do the matte medium at the same time. And we'll go for... In fact, it's probably easier to stick that down there like, like that. And then as soon as that's um, dry, I'm just going to give this um, a quick dry with my heat tool. Um, I'll do the back. So I've torn around the edges and now I'm just going to glue the other side. Let me just do it over here so that I've got one dry side and one sticky side. It's easier to tear it off first so that you can see exactly um, where you need to tear. Then let's move it over here and stick the napkin on top. So we'll have it there like that. And again, I'm just going to give this a dry with my heat tool and then I can tear around the edges. And that's the first one done. Pop myself a small amount of matte medium. Mine is the Windsor & Newton Galleria brand. And I'm just going to go over the napkin just with a coat of it, just to protect it, um, just because I've used glue stick and I don't want it um, coming unstuck. I'll do the same with the little tab here as well. So this is how my tea bag looks now that it's thoroughly dried. I just think that is so cute. Love it. I just want to try one more decoupage napkin before we move on to something else. I've got this napkin here. I have no idea where this one came from. I assume it was from Happy Mail, the Canada Gazette. Um, maybe Paulette sent this to me. I'm not sure. So I'm going to glue this one down to a square napkin. Hang on. Let me just um, put some pots onto this piece of parchment paper here because it's moving around. I want to use this part of the napkin here. So what I shall do is just tear down the centre like like this just being really really careful i don't want to tear into the into the butterflies there we go and then i can tear this across the across the top i'm not quite sure how much i'm going to going to need and then i shall tear down here like like this now i think only two of these butterflies are going to fit on so let's have a look um where's the tea bag gone Right, so what I'm going to do is tear across here like, like this and just keep tearing it down until it fits. So I need to tear a little bit off the um, sides. And as soon as I've done that, I'll be so back. I've torn it down and removed the other two plies so I can discard those now. And um, this time I'm going to use some watered down Mod Podge. So this is Mod Podge, matte Mod Podge, three parts Mod Podge, one part water. This is what I use throughout my nature journal. And again, I'm just going to apply the glue to the centre of the tea bag where, where I need it. Here we go. Make sure I've got plenty of glue down and curl that corner there. And then I'm just going to place my butterfly on, try and centralise it. And I'm just going to go over with some more Mod Podge, starting in the centre and just working my way out. Again, this is a really soft paintbrush because the napkin is so fragile, I don't want to tear it. And then I'm going to heat set this with my heat tool. And then hopefully the edges will just fade into the background of the of the tea bag. I'll come back and show you once I've done it. This is what the tea bag looks like now that it's dry. I really like how that looks. I also tried it on one of these skinny tea bags as well so that I could fit all three butterflies on. So I really like that too. This one has come out much lighter because of course the tea bag is much lighter. So it really depends on what kind of look you're going for. I really like the vintage um, feel of this one though. You can also stamp on tea bag papers. I've got this bird image here. Um, let me show you. It was free in a magazine called Crafts Beautiful and it's the March 2019 edition for any of you who've already got this or for anybody who wants to search and see if they can find it. Let me just see if there's um, a picture of the kit 
that's included there we go so those are all the stamps that um, came with this magazine so i've just chosen the bird image here and i'm just going to use my memento ink and espresso truffle so let's just ink this up make sure i've got plenty of ink on there that should do it and how do i want that to go um about there like that there we go put it down. I'm just going to hold that down for a second or two for the ink to grab. And then we can colour the bird in. There we go. Let's turn this cardstock over just so that you can see better. So that's my stamped image. And I think I'm going to colour this in with my Prismacolor pencils. Now I'm just colouring this in with my Prismacolor um, pe coloured pencils. I really like these. They're really easy to use. And I'm starting off with the lighter colour. I'm going to be really, really quick about this. So filling in the flower here we go like this then coming in with the next shade up and just adding a few highlights here and there just so that we've got a bit you know more interesting color and then some of the darker pink just around the outside like like this and then I'll fiddle with this again off camera I just don't want this to get too too boring. I just want um, just a touch of colour and I shall build it up so that it looks like this one here. And then for the leaves, I'm going to use this olive, olive green like this. Haven't decided what I'm going to do with the bird yet. Looks like an American chickadee, but we don't get those here. And then I'm just going to add some darker green just around the outside like this. I'm just following the shading on the stamp set itself and then just adding a tiny bit of my of my own. There we go, I like how that looks. Do the same over here as well. I've used brown for the branch here and I don't want to introduce too many colours so I'm going to use these colours for the bird as well. I'm going to turn him this way round just so that it's easier me to to color his tail can be brown as well there we are touches of brown here around his his head and then i think i'm going to do his um, tummy in yellow As I say, I don't want to introduce too many colours so that it looks busy against this um, background. A bit of yellow there as well. Here we go. Let's try and highlight his um, feet, claws. There we go. And I think I'm just going to fiddle around with the colours and leave that one be. Whoops to leave this one here I've just carried on playing with the pencil cranes just adding touches of different colours until it was pleasing to my eye I've got no idea what colour the bird is supposed to be but you know I'm happy with that and I just think this would look absolutely beautiful added to maybe um, some book paper used as part of a collage added to an art journal page even layered you know with various um, fabrics not sure how I'll use it but um, isn't it beautiful and see what we can do with one of these beautiful fruit tea tea bags. I've got one of the Dina Wakeley Scribbly Birds. That's from this set here. So Scribbly Birds. This is quite um, an old set, so I don't know whether it's still available. I'm sure many of you have got it. And I'm going to use some stays on ink in jet black this time. So I'm going to make sure that I get plenty of ink onto my stamp. I love this set and I haven't used it in absolutely ages. So, of course, my bird is facing this direction let me stand up and i want to have let's have a look the bird about about there like that i've just made sure that i've held that down for a few seconds to make sure that the ink grabs these tea bags are very very porous and you are not going to get the perfect image but you know that's enough for me to be able to color it now i'm just going to go around my image with a micron pen just to define it just a little bit better just before I start colouring. So 
so I'll do this off camera but um, but this is all I'm doing just to define those black lines just a little bit better. I could have done this on my stamping platform um, perhaps but I don't want to waste this lovely tea bag. Now that I've gone around with the Micron pen that looks much much better. I've dug out some more of the um, Prismacolor pencils. I've got some teals and blues here and also some crimsons and a bit of orange and a white for some highlights. And again, I'm just going to start off with the lightest colour and I'm just going to decorate my bird. So I'm just going to go from light to dark. I want to add a few different tones to this as well, just to make it look a bit more, a bit more interesting. But these are just so easy to use on the napkin um, tea bag paper. I've got a darker colour here as well that I can maybe use around the tips. And so I'm just going to colour this in. And as soon as I've finished him, I shall be straight back. I kept working on my bird and I'm really happy with him. So I used the Prisma um, pencil crayons. And I also used some of my Prima oil pastels as well. These are water soluble oil pastels just to intensify the colour. I'm really happy with that. Now in this set, um, there are two quotes and I want to use this one here. Keep a green bow in your heart and perhaps a singing bird will come. So I'm going to add that first. I'm going to use my stamping platform though and I want that to go about there like that so we'll press that down and then I'm just going to ink this up so let me just grab my ink what have I done with it I'm going to try some of the distress oxide in black so this is black soot um, I'm just hoping that this might be a little bit more intense. This paper, tea bag paper, is just so porous. And I'm using my stamping platform this time so that the quote will be nice and bold and visible. I hope this works. Oh, yes, there we go, you see. And I'm just going to stamp that a couple of times until I'm happy with it. Sorry, I'm having to keep moving my stamping platform over because my desk isn't <laughs> big enough. So we'll just keep keep doing that until I'm happy with it. I'm happy with that, that's nice and bold. And so what I want to do now is add the green bow. So I've got one of the Dilutions stamps here and here's the green bow. I just want to position that about there like, like that. So again, I can bring my stamping platform um, over. I think I might need to flip my platform round the other way for the clear one, actually. Let's see if that is any better. Yeah, there we go. And again, I'm just going to stamp that there like that. So bring back the book, the black soot. And I'm just going to keep stamping until I'm happy with the image. I'm happy with that, but I do want to add just a little bit more foliage. So I'm just going to reposition it, I think, about there. That should do it. So again, we'll place that into position. And I'm just going to keep going and I shall add a little bit more down here as well so let's just stamp this for you so that you can you can see there like that and that's just padding it out just a, a little bit so I'm happy with how that looks and again I'm just using my Prismacolor pencils just to colour the leaves in I might add a few highlights using my Prima oil pastels as well but I just think that looks so cute. So as soon as I'm finished, I'll come and show you what it looks like. I've chosen a few colours as well because I might add just a, just a little bit more just around the edges as well, just to give it a bit of dimension. We can add just a bit of dark at the tip here like this. You see, I think that makes a big, big difference. Well, I'm calling this one done as well. I just think that is absolutely beautiful. And what am I going to do with it? I hear you ask. Well, I've mounted, um, let me just show you on a piece of black cardstock because you'll probably be able to see a little bit better. I've cut um, a postcard size piece of cardstock, six by four inches, and I've added this paper design here from this paper pack here, Pretty Pastel Creations. This was from the pound shop. And 
what I think I'm going to do is just tear around the edges ever so, ever so slightly. I'll do this off camera because otherwise I'll end up screwing it up. Um, just because I want to rough the edges up a little bit and then I'm going to sew it um, onto that background there like that. Sewing around the edges, um, so that's given me more of a border as well, which I really like. I do want to um, ink this up though with some Distress Ink first. Oh, is that oxide? No, it's, um, no it isn't. I thought I'd got the wrong one then. So I'm just going to ink around the edges just to give it more of a vintage look. Um, then I'm just going to tack this down just with a little bit of um, glue stick and I'm going to take it off to my sewing machine. I've done my messy sewing and I've gone back three or four times on the bottom just to give him a platform to stand on. I love that. I think that's really adorable. Um, so much fun working on these tea bag papers. I decided to finish this one off as well. So I've just mounted the tea bag onto another piece of white cardstock. I've sewn around the edge as you can see and the way that I've roughed up the edges is just using my scissors. I've just gone backwards and forwards scraping it just to rough it up and then I've applied some distress ink in frayed burlap. Now I've printed off the or stamped the other uh, quote in the Dina Wakeley set. A bird does not have an oh hang on a minute a bird does not sing because it has an answer there we go it sings because it has a song and I've just stamped this onto white cardstock the one that I was using as a background so that um, I didn't waste it and I'm just going to glue that down with some Fabri-Tac and that's that one done as well I just think these are really really cute now there's one more idea that I want to share with you I want to do something with um, one of the round tea bags I've got this stamp set here this is called um what's it called bird in a circle and it's by Hero Arts. I got this on clearance from my local craft store before everything went into lockdown. Um, and what I'm going to do is I've cut a piece of cardstock that is slightly larger than the stamp and I'm going to use my stamping platform for this. So I'm just going to position it into place and then I'm going to use my Distress Oxide ink again and I'm just going to stamp the image I know I'm slightly off camera, um, but this will save me keep moving the platform backwards and forwards. And I'm just going to stamp this until I've got a really clear image in the, exactly the same way as I did before. Now you can see that um, I'm going to have to repeat this several times. It was a good job that um, I used the stamping platform. Let's try it one more time. And I'm just going to build up these layers until I've got um, a nice crisp image. You can see it's coming. There we are. I'm happy with that um, image there. Um, now I'm going to leave the stamp where it is and take the cardstock off. I want to keep the stamp in place so I'm just going to be careful. I've got a piece of paper and I'm just going to grab some clear embossing powder. I'm going to tip the embossing powder over the image that I've just stamped. I'm running low on the clear, so I might have to do it bit by bit. But the Distress Oxides um, are pigment inks, um, so of course they dry a lot slower. Um, so you can emboss with them really, really easily. I might need a bit more ink uh, powder down here. There we go. And then I'm just going to heat set that with my heat tool. So that's now set and I'm going to pop that to one side for the ink to dry. Bring back my stamping platform. So let's put this where you can see it. And then I need my tea bag. Here we go. What I'm going to do um, is which side has been opened. I'm going to apply a tiny bit of glue stick to the back of the tea bag and you'll see why in a second. There we go, like that. Um, and then I'm going to place the tea bag over the image here and try and centralise this um, as best as I, I can. So I think that needs to be about there. Then I'm going to flip the platform over like that. Come on and press it into place. Um, and it might need to do a bit of jiggery pokery with them um, with this. There we go. Then I'm going to flip it over and lift it up and there we go and now of course my tea bag is in place i'm slightly off center but that's okay that's not too bad and then i shall bring back the distress ink where's it gone and stamp my image onto the tea bag 
doesn't matter if I've got um, some ink around the edge. And again, I'm going to have to repeat this a few times um, to get a crisp image. And as soon as I've done that, I shall be back. My image is nice and crisp, and so I just need to be careful now when I lift it off to make sure that I don't smudge that ink. And I'm going to have to heat set that with my heat tool. And then I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol just to remove the ink that's on my platform. So I've just got some rubbing alcohol here, and of course it would just come straight, straight off. So clean up, done. Don't put um, alcohol on your rubber stamps though because it will damage it. So I'll have to just um, wipe this off just with a regular cloth. The embossing's now dry and the ink is dry on the tea bag as well. And what I'm going to endeavour to do is line these up. Um, and this is going to be the tricky part. Um, so that I can have the tea bag just as an over the top embellishment. There's still work to do. What I'm going to do is colour this in with my Prismacolor pencils again. And I shall also, can you hear Alex blowing his nose? The hay fever is still <laughs> as problematic as ever. And I'm also going to colour the flowers around the edge here um, as well, because of course those will be poking out of the side. And as soon as I've done that, I shall be back. Now my background's coloured in where it needs to be and my tea bag is done. And what I'm going to attempt to do in a minute is line it up um, and that the tea bag will be my focal image. Now the white looks too stark against the tea bag. So what I want to do, I've got some frayed um, burlap here, just the regular distress ink. I'm going to use one of these brushes here. And what I'm going to try and do is just bring some colour. I'm going to trim most of this off, um, but I just want to start off at the edge just so that I don't go too heavy. And I'm just going to bring some of the ink into the centre like this which will tone it down really nicely but without it being too heavy if I'd have applied it with a with a sponge. I'm ready to sew my tea bag down. I couldn't resist colouring in the others even though I know that you're not going to see it. Now I'm not going to go right to the very um, edge of the tea bag. I just want to apply the glue to the centre. Oh whoops it is I've pressed too hard and it's come off in a big a big blob here we go let's get rid of let's get rid of that wipe it off on my my tissue sometimes if you pull the um, glue stick out too much that happens that's me being heavy heavy handed so that should be that should be enough and then oh whoops a daisy all oh, butter fingers so then i'm going to try um, and line it up so, should go there, like that. Oh, that was good. I'm just going to press that down. And then, of course, the edges, um, I'm just going to leave flapping slightly. I might um, add a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac um, just to glue that down just ever so slightly um, more just on this edge here but I'm really happy with that. I have a plan. Okay so I just want to um, frame it with some espresso truffle like this just to get rid of any of the white edges. I don't want too thick um, a border on this. I don't want to darken it too much. That's that's enough. Put the lid back on that. And then I've got myself um, a piece of burlap, quite heavy textured burlap. And I'm just going to sew my image um, on just around the edges. I'm just going to glue it down just temporarily with a glue stick. Stick some in the middle as well. Uh, there we go. In fact, I might use a bit of Fabri-Tac um, as well just because I don't want it bubbling and warping in the middle. So just to the middle, like, like that. There we go, that's that done. And then let's try and centralise this. Which side do I want it on? It doesn't really matter, to be honest. I think it's that side. And then I'm just going to take it off to my sewing machine. Now I'm back the next day and I'm not going to lie, the burlap um, hessian that I decided to mount my project on gave me some real issues and you might notice that um, the background is considerably smaller than um, it started off as. Um, so that was the size of it to start with and I've just trimmed around the edges. 
the bell up just completely warped. It was an absolute mess and I ended up having to unpick everything. So then I had the bright idea of just sewing um, just around the outside itself to try and cover up the holes and it just completely perforated and tore the paper. So I just trimmed the edges off in the end um, and then stuck another piece of burlap down completely with Fabri-Tac right to the very edge and carefully put it through the sewing machine again. Now it's not perfect and I have had to trim um, to make it straight around the edges but that looks good enough to me um, and to hide some of the unevenness as well I've mounted it on a piece of the cotton rag caddy paper k-h-a-d-i caddy paper and I just love that and I just think that would look lovely mounted on a card front I mean you know that would make the most beautiful um, greetings card this will probably end up in my journal at some stage but I just love that now this the idea for, for, for doing this started off because I had printed just the circular bit onto my tea bag in the same way that I showed you how, how I did it. Um, and the, the middle part just looked blank so I just added some more of the text stamping and then I kept looking at it thinking that I'd really like the text in the background and just how lovely it might look if I just added the tea bag to the centre so that's where the idea sprung from and I just think that looks so interesting to now me. I've also done a bumblebee card as well I just absolutely love this one now this is another napkin project and um, this is the napkin here and that's the image this napkin has got four different types of bees. I use the honey bee. We've got um, a cuckoo bumblebee, a garden bumblebee, a white-tailed bumblebee and a honey bee. So that's the one that I used there. And all I did was just glued um, the honeybee itself down to my tea bag like this now when I'd done that and taken the layers apart the wings just completely disappeared all you could see was the dark bits here so again I've just used my Prismacolor crayons just to color everything back in um, and highlight everything and I just absolutely love how that looks and that was just glued to a regular piece of white card so just to recap as I've said earlier Kylie and I are going to be doing something different for this month we are going to be setting you weekly challenges using something small of course the prompt for this week is to use tea bags um, and I do hope that the video today has given you plenty of ideas as to how the prompt can be interpreted I look forward to seeing all your wonderful creations in the Facebook group and for anybody who is new to my channel or fancies playing along with us I'll leave the link to the Mixed Media Emporium in the description box below but until then if you like the video as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care everyone thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon bye for now